Hello. Okay, back. Um, right. What are we doing here? Uh, I think stuff is going unreasonably well. Okay. Let's go over here. Let me go ahead and snipe and aid this guy. Stuff's going all right, I think. Generally speaking. Although, yeah. As long as it remains indoors. Holy crap. So we had like two feet of snow last night. And uh, that is some disgusting nonsense, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, basically, hmm, how do we put that? Also, which one's Toots? Your Toots, okay. Why do you suck, Toots? What's your deal? Hmm. Oh well. Toots apparently can't do damage. Oh, dang it, I probably should use the Infernal then. Ah, whatever. Whatever. But yeah, no, so, um... So we have snow everywhere, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Um... Fun of, uh, winter in Michigan, that's for sure. It's like, it was absolutely fine. Yes, well, not necessarily yesterday, but... The day before yesterday, everything was all fine. Everybody was having a good day, you know, stuff was alright. There we go, stop him, please. And then just out of nowhere. Oh, wow, that actually missed for once. That never misses. Yes, yeah, so out of nowhere, just snow all over the dang place, as, as it happens. I mean, it's not exactly unheard of. Just one of those fun things you learn to deal with. And uh, yeah, then you drive around on the snow, pray that your car doesn't die, that sort of thing. Especially if you haven't happened to uh, drive an utter rust bucket, then... Uh, then you're especially praying that that thing doesn't break in half on a friggin' random snow pile. But, um, you know, winter's fun, I guess. Would be nice for it to be over. Uh, kind of uh, a little bit over it at this point. But it's alright. It's, it's an alright season. You get to uh, spend more time indoors without looking like a weirdo. So that's nice. Mm, yeah, I mean, that, that about sums it up. Thumbs up uh, the useful utilities of winter, as long as you're, uh, you're not, like, trying to defend against invading French people or something. You know, invading French or Germans or whatever. So, funny, uh, funny note here. So the winter often gets credited as far as, um, uh, as far as France and Germany losing to Russia and stuff like that. Um, it actually doesn't mention the mud part a whole lot, because in most of those cases they had... At least they were vaguely aware, like, I know in the case of Napoleon, he actually didn't... wasn't uh, directly in winter, it was, um... It was, like, a little bit after then. Or no, it was a bit before... I wasn't... No, it was, like, it, a few months in either direction, I can't remember right now, but... Either way, uh, point being, they, uh... They weren't going in the winter, per se, because, you know, snow. So it's friggin' nobody wants to deal with all that crap, so... Anyway, they came at a different time, but during all the rest of the year, as in when it's not ridiculously snowy, they've got mud, and mud is just as bad to deal with, so it pretty much, the whole thing with Russia there is just, it geolog well, geographically sucks so hard that it's gonna be horrible for anyone to go there any time of year. <laughs> so, I mean, like, other than a few months, I think it was, um like a few months during the summer, where everything's a little bit better, but they've got two mud seasons and a really long winter, so for any extended period of time, it's just not going to work out. Um, yeah, mud season's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Everything that I've seen and read about it is just, there's mud everywhere, and it's gross and disgusting, and why are we here? I uh, wish at some point somebody knew uh, what caused OBS and the emulator to suddenly lag during that whole thing with uh, with the trajectory screen. Oh well. Someday... Someday, there will be a version of PPSSPP that does not have these problems. Alright, I think we might lose Luca over there, but eh, it's alright. Actually, no. No, we won't, because their healing's coming right on time. There we are. 
Thankfully these archers are stopped forever. They're not actually stopped forever, I'm just basically ripping on it for no real good reason here. Alright, let me steal from this guy. Because that's what should do. Oh, well there we go, he stopped being stopped. How about that? Just in time to get sniped in the back of the head, I think. Uh, about that. There we are. Darn. Crit would have been real nice there, but he didn't feel like giving one. Wasn't feeling like being particularly generous. Gonna learn that? No, I'm pretty sure you can't use it. <laughs> Alright. You smackinate this lady type. There we are. Yep, kill move yet. Yes, you do. Okay, and it's got range too, so... Tough standing in that regard. Alright, he, uh... Can you finish him? Yes, you can. Can you both finish him, though? That's a better question. That was a bad question. Why did I ask it? Why did I just roll a 40%? I suppose I should expect it at this point. But it didn't seem like a thing that should happen. Okay. Don't shield smack. Hmm. Gonna go for one of these. Hopefully the next one, whoever that is that's coming up, can finish him off. If not, well... Darn. Then he'll, uh, then he'll need to get, get uh, one of them stoppy makeouts. Alright. Vin, I apologize, you're about to make out with this random soldier. It wasn't me, it was the game's fault, okay? <laughs> there we go, hit three 60% in a row, that'll do. Uh, it feels like it would be... I don't know. I feel like it needs to be 40% each or something, because seriously, 60% is just crazy strong. Just because event... like... It will end up hitting with all... well, with something. I think, well, actually, maybe 45%? I don't know, what would be statistically the most likely? I have a feeling like he went and ran a bunch of statistics and something, and 60% was the most likely to end up hitting one or two as opposed to all three. But, uh, I wonder. Alright, so they can't move, but they went ahead and dodged anyway. Even though they are completely incapable of perceiving time right now. Hmm. Alright, that makes sense. So, to be fair, uh, the main reason, I'm fairly confident in this, uh, the main reason that they don't, uh, that stop doesn't cause uh, the same thing as some of the other ones as far as a, um, as far as making them unable to actually, you know, dodge or whatever, is because it would be extraordinarily overpowered if that was the case. Just because a lot more things have stop and it's a lot more readily available than... You know, something like Petrify. Like Petrify, they can't do anything. Sleep, they can't do anything. And plus, it would kind of nullify the whole point of sleep if they were able to do so. Right. Go ahead and uh, take out this guy. Lies and blasphemy. Well, dang. I think he's about to go get uh, beat by an old man. Right. Um, Infernal. Expect to see this animation like a million times in this run, as it cripples the ever-loving Christ out of everything in the way. Alright. Alright, they're doing no damage anyway, they might as well... Actually, no. I was gonna say they might as well train, but there's a chance for Luca not to lose a life here. A very unlikely, holy crap, how unlikely was that chance for that to be exactly within one tile. Ah, awesome, awesome. Okay, then... Let's take some free shots at this guy. I mean, we seem to be going on the mindset of just eliminating everything anyway. And it's much more practical now. 
Like, as messed up as that sounds, it's nice to see that it's more practical to actually fight everything to actually beat their leader, because they're actually going and trying to protect their leader. Um... Now, in a historical context for the whole thing, um, actual obliteration of, you know, armies and whatever else was actually not that likely. It usually was something along the lines of you know, they went, they fought for a little while, one of them was clearly beat, and so they would end up retreating. Um, usually the whole annihilation thing was... okay, that was lucky. Usually the whole outright elimination thing was more in cases of, uh, of somebody just being a massive douche, or there was some kind of crazy genocidal thing going on, or something like that. But, by and large, you know... Like I was saying, it's just, it, I believe the, the exact numbers were like, uh, on average, it was like 14% casualties that caused them to retreat, at least in most uh, major recorded fights and all that. Well, there was that. But yeah, uh, this was mostly for economic reasons, as far as I understand it. Uh, there's, um... It's a Scala, uh, Scala Gladiatoria guy uh, that uh, does a lot of in-depth stuff on stuff, on uh, things like that. Like, you know, wages people had back then and that sort of thing. But there was, um, that there was one particular that was uh, essentially how people had made going to wars and stuff like that during the Hundred Years' War and stuff. Like, how it became normal over time, how they essentially turned it into a career, more or less. Because the thing was going on for so friggin' long that it eventually got to the point where, you know, the odds of somebody making it through, even under those numbers, were like, okay, 86%, and they got a pretty decent amount of money, they basically could go and support themselves on that. They had no home expenses, because, you know, they weren't home. Essentially, they were just stockpiling money, going off, fighting wars everywhere, so it, all in all, was a pretty good deal. So they would essentially go off and fight wars and that sort of thing, and, uh, and come back, and then upgrade their stuff, maybe get themselves a horse. There we go, by the way, this, these things do, uh, spell strike. Not that their accuracy is lacking right now, I just wanted to show that off, because, you know, they're not up for much damage right now. Yeah, so they would do that for quite a while. You know, usually upgrading themselves to a horse. Uh, so essentially they were <clears throat> they were paid more for uh, for being able to move their stuff around better. You know, they were essentially their uh, their handlers were recovered. They essentially moved up to a higher place in the hierarchy to uh, to be able to get more loot out of uh, out of wherever they were going. And yeah, they just did that. <laughs> It's an interesting financial structure for that whole thing, but it kind of explains why so many people were so okay with that whole setup. It was like, okay, they made jobs. <laughs> it's like they fixed population and they made jobs at the same time. It's in a really messed up way, kind of, an, kind of a fitting economic policy, which I assume is why so many sci-fi things end with or at least have a background thing of just constant wars in the background for that reason. It's like, okay, they have overpopulation, they also need to make jobs, turn war into a job. Like, <laughs> I, I guess in some weird way that makes sense. Then again, I mean, ants figured that out a while ago. All kinds of crazy ant wars and crap. Hearing recently about all kinds of uh, beetles and stuff that uh, went to different wars and everything. How was it put? I forget exactly how that went. Oh well. I'm just rambling at this point. Um, this fight's pretty much done. Right now all that's left is beating down this guy and his friends. Because there's not a whole lot they can do anymore. Alright, that's gonna be a 0%. This knight here can't do anything. I mean, the crossbows can hurt this guy, but they're still only going to plink. I mean, the thing is, by and large, when it comes to um, 
actually ending fights. Well, <clears throat> some of these bosses make it a little bit difficult, that's for sure. You definitely can't beat these uh, knights early on. Well, I mean, you could with the right setup, but I'm not set up for it in the least. I'm gonna mash on this fast forward button for a while. Probably heal some folks. There's not much else Vin can do right now. You know, another kind of um, undisclosed benefit of uh, Infernal Kiss here that that I want to point out is essentially it's one of the very few that allows you to re-up what you've already kind of set up. Like, if you've got a bunch of debuffs going on, if you hit somebody with that same debuff, unless it turns off, I don't believe it actually re-ups on them. So, essentially, in this way, you know, you essentially have a thing where you say essentially over and over. No, um, you essentially have a thing where you can go and you have Bind Shack Land stop and you can just rotate between them. Not that there's really a need to do that on this guy in particular. Yet. Alright, let's go shank him. There we go, finally. You tanky bastard. And, uh, yeah, now we just beat this guy until he stops uh, existing. Such is life, you know. Probably get some weapon skills in the process. Essentially take him, taking him down a, a quarter of a percent at a time. Alright, let's see if you got a shot from here. I doubt it. Oh, you do. Interestingly enough. I guess it's time to start letting Steve act quickly instead of uh, stealing repeatedly. I'm gonna have to change his name to Steel of Har Har. Um, <laughs> go here. It's a weird thing, but I kind of wonder what would happen if you made Dwarf Fortress in this kind of context. Like in the, uh, this whole Tactics Ogre universe, or Ogre Battle, whatever you want to call it. If you haven't played uh, Dwarf Fortress before, it's this weird kind of life simulator thing with no real uh, end goal in it. It's just you have some migrants. You have um, you have a, a, a vaguely defined goal to go and build a fortress, and the idea is just you keep them alive as long as possible. But uh, the thing is, everything in it is like crazy detailed. So despite the fact that it is entirely, well, it's entirely visually in text. <laughs> so as, essentially, you're looking at a bunch of like letters going around doing stuff, but. It's only because it has to process so much crap at one time that giving it graphics would probably cause your computer to catch fire. But uh, it's like you got literally every part of every single unit, as well as every single intent and ev you know their schedules, who they know, what their relative skills are, whether you know what their personalities are like, what down to their friggin' eye color. You will, you know, suddenly see that somebody got inspired to make a, you know, statue of a guy that got eaten by a friggin' zombie were giraffe. Yes, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it's like, well, you can't, they didn't add much detail in it, but they added an eye color and part of a name, and it's like, wow, okay, it's that guy. So, it's really fun to watch, um, and once you get, uh, once you start, like, getting into it, it's really fun to play, too. Personally, I just prefer watching it because, frankly, most fortresses I have end up lasting a couple years and then just end up ending tragically with one single invasion. Because there's, like, regular invasions, there's regular trading things, there, you may inadvertently start a war on accident because, you know, you went and tried to sell friggin' tables to somebody that really, really, really likes tables. And then suddenly they're showing up in an army like, yeah, no, we worship tables, or we worship trees or whatever, and they're like, these guys gotta go. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting thing. Uh, but what's actually, what's uh, really fun about it is essentially it saves a constant world, like it comes up with a whole world history and whole, um, like, 
all the stuff that happened, all the different cultures, all of the different wildlife, all the different, uh, just everything. You know, flora, fauna, whatever. And, like, it's, it's gonna stay there. Essentially, it'll stay there between, you know, if you want to have multiple fortresses in the same place, and then you can go back and play it as a roguelike. So essentially, you can just start off and it's like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna go do whatever here, and then you just travel around and you run into the remains of your old failed fortresses and stuff like that. It's so cool. Uh, and it's still being updated. Like, it's been updated for years now, and they're still going. It's got more detail than anything I've ever seen. And it's still going. So. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. All right, Pharrell, um, you are, um, durable. <laughs> We're gonna go with durable. Ah. Yeah, like, Pharrell for, for was one of those kind of annoying mid-bosses before. Now he's an actual gatekeeper of sorts. He's hard enough to the point where you can't reliably actually beat him without beating his army. Not really much of an army, it's more of a squad, but whatever. As it goes... Like, every time a definition of something comes up in Tactics Ogre, it's like, it's... It winds up as, well, it's not a thing, it's more of a thing. Mm-hmm. He's not a traitor to humanity. He wasn't one to begin with. He's a robot. Okay. Ooh, Iron Staff. Ooh, that means fighting sticks are actually available. Yeah, whatever, Volkert, shut up. Um... Let me see, let me see, let me see... Well, it's... Okay, it's not the hitty one. Darn. I thought it was gonna be the hitty one. It's probably the one that he should have at this point. Let me take a look at if there's anything new. Okay, so this is when I would have gotten the claws and the hammer and the daggers and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna switch to those daggers, though. Um, can't use those, can't use those, those, can use these. So... Like I said, it, it wasn't a, a particularly gigantic advantage. So, I'm not really going to go back and redo it. Alright. Alright. First off, two daggers. Second off, more of these. I don't really feel like I need anti-mage claws on Steve. <coughs> Second off... Uh, you know what? Money isn't going to matter, so I'm just going to take that off of him. Got books. Do I really want to give books to anyone? Not really. Yeah, armor-wise, this is when we would have gotten access to Curiouses and stuff like that. This is normally when you'd get access to Boulder in, uh, in, main game, in uh, the main game. But uh, essentially, for the purposes of this mod, it's essentially cloth, uh, leather, or cloth, light, heavy. So cloth, light, and then you get heavy later. So it's the second tier heavy, more or less. But you can last a lot longer with um, less stuff. All right. Uh, get some, uh, some leather chaps for everyone. That doesn't sound disturbing in the least. Alright, probably more Aspices. I think we need three more. Could be wrong, but like I said, money is not one of those things that matters very much right now. Mastered eight, so let me get eight of these. Two of them. Eight of them. And do they know it? No. 
that. Yeah, this is one of the biggest money dumps in the game, I think, right here. Right, they can't do major heal, but there we go, heal two. Alright, so you get claws. <clears throat> Basically, you're deciding whether you want slightly more attack and anti-magic stuff, or if you want the evasion. And for Steve, I kind of want the evasion. Which is why he's also getting some friggin' stuff. <laughs> friggin' pants of that description. Uh, hang on, are Balder Bows a thing? They probably should be a thing right now. First off. Are they? Yes. Right, get rid of those, get rid of those. Get rid of one of them, get rid of that thing. What else is I doing? I need, like ten of these. Craft a wacky stick. Alright, silver staff, so I need Balder and Bernie. Get over here, Sanders. Mm. And got a wacky stick. Alright. Behold ye wacky stick. And that's some redonkulous damage, though. Huh. Kind of considering whether I should go back to Stavs now. Hmm. So I probably didn't need to do that right there. No, yes I did. First off that, second off that. Alright. Because yeah, you needed armor. Despite not... Why can you have gauntlets? No, oh, whatever. Who cares? Alright, you get one of them dealies, uh, as does he. There we go. Did I buy these, or did I just... Awesome. Do -do 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 -do. I went and sold all that s or spent all that money I just got. Alright. Five bows. And I think I can make heavy bows, right? Well, let's get to... Yep, to uh, Balder and find out. <laughs> All right. Even though I technically need three of them, whatever. Okay, so it looks like these ones are just better. So the short bows are just an improvement, right, and I need three of them. In that case, let's buy one more. Let's compare the two side by side. Okay, yeah, no, that one is just an upgrade. Except you wouldn't be able to use it for quite a while, so they're just there. Right, because he said short bows and, um, and guns, they're essentially just going to have the regular upgrade pattern to fill in the gaps, so... Goes as it goes. Uh, hemp and boulder. Here, go to this thing, get some hemp. And yes, that does mean exactly what you think. What? Wait, what? I'm confused. Okay, so I should point out one thing here. For some reason, one of the codes, and I want to say it's the one that uh, essentially does the whole... What's it? Uh, 
does the whole no upgrades or whatever situation. Um, for some reason, it messes with the uh, the percentages for crafting. I'm not sure why. It just sort of does that, but it doesn't come up that often, so whatever. Uh, everything just, uh, for some reason, while using that code, unless also using 100% code, it just basically causes it to, uh, to go all janky and max out at 93%. What is your deal? Yeah, 90... Ah! Take your 90s and shove them, because they're not 90s right now. Again, I want to point out, this is not a normal function of the mod. This is just what happens when you apply too many cheats to a thing, and it's just like, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> So, just disclaimer. Also, we should be going back to doing friggin' anti-tank rifle levels of damage with these bows now. This is <laughs> 256, holy Christ. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, did the, did the uh, heavy ones get an upgrade? Or did they get new technology yet? Um, no, not quite yet. Oh, and there actually is a lower level crossbow. I didn't notice that earlier. Okay, could have had um, could have had the monom earlier. Oh well. Uh, however, we are going to pick up a tomahawk. Craft ranged. Because I can't upgrade the tomahawk yet. All right, skills learn. Light arms. And there we go. See? Steve has an axe now. Oh, good. So, I'll give him a heavy axe later. And I'm only going to use axe-looking stuff, so like the tomahawks with jellies, um, the, uh, shik I think it was a shikmok or something like that. Okay. And I think think we're all good. Alright, so, in that case, I will... wait, the unfaithful? What? For what? Um... Lifelong friend... he tried to murder everyone! Screw that guy. Whatever. Okay, see you next time then. <laughs>